Robert Zombie, or Rob if you're nasty, started as a member of White Zombie. His first solo album, Hellbilly Deluxe, was influenced by classic horror films, so it was easy to see his passion extend to movies, animation, and even designing maze attractions for Universal Studios. It seemed natural to take the big chair on his own horror movie. In the style of those gritty, gory, gratuitous horror movies, where bigger is better and more is more, this is the House of a Thousand Corpses. <laughs> I forgot to mention that Mr. Zombie also directed music videos, and it shows. It also reinforces the tone for the movie. It's rough, tense, and it really makes you uneasy. Some movies try to switch the tone after the titles, but but at this point, we're all in. Howdy, folks. Like blood, violence, freaks of nature. It opens with a Dr. Wolfenstein. He's like Sven Gulli, but without Elvira's <clears throat> double features. Welcome to Captain Spaulding's Gas, Food, and Museum of Monsters and Mayhem. Mmm-mmm, fried chicken and gasoline. How do they fry the gasoline? It's a quiet night, nobody around except for Captain S himself, played by Sid Haig, and his buddy Stucky, played by Michael J. Pollard. Seemingly easy pickings for a couple of clueless robbers, Carl and Richard. But Captain Spaulding ain't no clown, son! You miserable motherfucker! I ought to jump over this counter and bash your fucking balls in! Hand over the cash box and I might leave your brains inside your skull. Fuck your mama! His assistant, Ravelli, played by Erwin Keyes, helps bring clown justice. Captain Spaulding ain't running a normal tourist attraction here. Oh look, tourists. Jerry, Bill, Mary, and Denise are working on a book about unusual roadside attractions. This roadside attraction is about as unusual as you can get. They're played by Chris Hardwick, Rain Wilson, Jennifer Jostin, and Aaron Daniels, respectively. This isn't everything. There is actually a murder ride. A murder ride? Yeah. I don't want to go on a murder ride. Yes, you do want to go on no, a murder ride. They go for the murder ride, which looks pretty fun considering. It's like the back of a spirit store, without the crying kids and everything works. You gotta admire the showmanship. Eat your heart out, Star Wars land. The tour focuses on famous serial killers, but one of the attractions in particular refers to a local legend. Hey, Dr. Satan. Holy oh, shit! I think that name is trying a little too hard. Dr. Satan tortured and murdered patients before he was caught and hanged by an angry mob from a tree not far from here. Dr. Satan! Ah, Calm down, it was all right. Investigators still have no leads in the strange disappearance of the five cheerleaders from Ruggsville High School. Think they have anything to do with these missing cheerleaders? Nah. I know it seems stupid, but I really want to see this tree. Do yourself a favor, son, just forget about it. This movie is a list of seriously bad decisions. Getting directions, they head over in the dead of night. They pick up a hitchhiker at night. The hitchhiker is Baby, played by Mrs. Zombie herself, Sherry Moon Zombie. Of course, she lives close by. I'll show you where it's at. If someone needs to be killed, you kill him. Okay, Baby is evil, so they're obviously not saving that for a twist reveal. That does ramp up the tension because they have no clue she's bad. And she's sitting right there. Look out, Yogi's packing! No spare, and this is the 70s, so no cell phones. Now my brother's got a tow truck, he can come get your car. Bill and Baby go on ahead to her house to get her brother, who happens to have a tow truck. Come on, I'll show you my butcher knife collection. I have to break free from this culture of my- Found the cheerleaders. What was that? <sighs> that better not be another hook on the door handle. If you need a toe, that'll be one picnic basket. They'll be easier to kill when they're all close together. How do I look? No idea. I need those to see. This is Mama, played by Karen Black, matriarch of the Firefly family and immigrant from Fraggle Rock. What do they call you, sweetie? Uh, problematic or allegedly abusive. Allegedly. You are all invited to dinner. While their car is being fixed, they're all invited to a really awkward Halloween tradition at the Firefly house. They get to meet Tiny. Tiny is deformed, scarred, and according to Mama... Oh, he's a real lady killer. A bit on the nose. Tiny was hurt when Mama's husband Earl tried to burn the house down. That's, that's how they do. Sorry, didn't see you there, son. Give me a D, give me an E, give me an A, give me a D. What does that spell? Deceased. Grandpa, played by Dennis Fimple, and Otis, played by Bill Mosley, join for dinner. 
Also joining is a fetus in a jar. I can't tell if it's ironic that they're pro-choice. Ladies and germs! It's showtime! This family really, literally likes to put on a show. Gramps likes to perform comedy that would just make Daniel Tosh blush, but he's just the opening act. And Baby does her thing. I wanna be loved by you, just you. Nobody else but you. I think she's lip syncing. Of course, this is I Wanna Be Loved By You by Helen Kane. I shared that to sound knowledgeable, but I really just looked that up. Mary's green-eyed monster rears its ugly head. I almost expect an actual green-eyed monster to appear somewhere. Before things get even more awkward, their car's done. And they bolt before Tiny can do his act. They can't get past their trained attack scarecrows. And if Chris Hardwick is your backup, just, just surrender now. He's taken down faster than an open essay. Allegedly. After these messages, uh, we'll be right back. Don't you wish you were nicer to baby? And it's time for some quality time with Otis. Where's Bill? Where's He's Bill? fine. He's fine. I gotta say, Otis works fast. Uh, I don't approve of this Little Mermaid remake. The cops are here to save them. Well, most of them. Actually, I'm willing to bet they're gonna be pretty useless. Denise isn't doing much better, but her makeup is on fleek, son. And Jerry flips his lid. Ah! The cops find their car, which only adds to the confusion. Oh, God damn. Oh, my God. Wait. This might be a clue. Denise's dad arrives. He's an ex-cop, so he can help with the investigation. And he'll save the day. The trail leads to the Firefly house. So let's split up. You hear that? Yeah. Yeah, I hear it. Where do you think he's coming from? Another clue. This might mean something. I don't want to jump to conclusions, but this could lead us to the missing cheerleaders. They call for backup, but I think these are the only two cops in town. Look at the flowers, Lizzie! This is a 30 second shot. Let's skip ahead so YouTube doesn't lose their shit. Wait for it. Oh, did it happen? Oh, shoot, I missed it. Let me take a guess here. Y'all having a Halloween party tonight, now, huh? What makes you think that, big boy? It's always a party in this house. And the kids are decked out in cute bunny outfits. Does Ralphie's aunt live here too? Otis is wearing his finest Denise's dad face. Okay, that is messed up. It's all true. The boogeyman is real. I guess they finally get to meet Dr. Satan. Mary tries to get away, but I don't think she'll make it all the way back to 8 Mile. I better cross here. Kill the wabbit! Kill the wabbit! Kill the wabbit! I think that'd be the end of them, right? No, not even close. Mutants come out of nowhere to take Jerry away, leaving Denise. So is he singled out? <laughs> May we take your bunny costume, Madden? Well, we were promised a thousand corpses, right? Say what you will about this crazy, messed up family. They do things together. I feel like that's rare these days. Denise finds Jerry in the very capable hands of Dr. Satan himself, who is extremely skilled at killing Jerry. Do you think Chloe Dykstra watches this on a loop? It's Earl, Mother's ex and the doctor's assistant. Luckily, he's not very bright. Of all the shit in here, I have to hit something load-bearing. Denise crawls out through the new opening and flags down help. Look, it's your old pal, Captain Spaulding! I knew you couldn't trust a clown. Well, Denise is fucked. You didn't expect any of them to get away, did you? That was House of a Thousand Corpses. It's easy to see why this movie has a cult following. It's brutal, it's kooky, it's batshit insane. You get superficial glimpses of their characters, but they are here to do one thing. 
die. Do you want to know how you can usually tell? When they do die, you don't really miss them. This movie belongs to the Firefly family. The movie draws inspiration from actual serial killers such as Ed Gein, which also influenced movies such as The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which makes House of a Thousand Corpses look more like an exaggerated parody at times. Even though he's not a main character, and we don't see him for most of the movie, I think Captain Spaulding is my favorite. Sid Haig is a low-budget joker, and that's a compliment. He's funny, scary, and at times, normal. He could be living next door to you right now. No, don't check now. He'll find you. Tiny was played by Matthew McCory, who died in 2005. Before the big screen had Harley Quinn, there was Baby. Is there such a thing as too much crazy? Her insanity got cartoony a few times, and it became hard to take her seriously. Sorry, you lose! <laughs> she starts off friendly and rather normal, but we know almost as soon as we meet her, she's... Shall we say, got more going on. If someone needs to be killed, you kill him. The entire family is so over the top, so outrageous, you start to feel like they're trying too hard to be scary, homicidal oddballs. We all knew that kid who liked to be weird just because it brought him attention. <laughs> the third act seems to stick out from the rest of the movie, slipping from human horror to creature sci-fi. Rob Zombie set up a relentless tone that does not let up. Even the comedic elements make you uneasy. It's gory, it's exploitative, and shocking, which was the intent. Zombie made this to please fans of the genre, not to create an original product. The makeup and effects are pretty good considering the budget. Dr. Satan was gruesomely played by Walter Phelan, but his eventual reveal was so late in the movie, I kinda wished we had more of him. It's not a movie for character development, subtext, or hidden meaning. That's not the point, is it? House of a Thousand Corpses is three Bs. What Rob Zombie has here is not your typical horror movie. It's more like one of those thrill rides. It's just scene after scene of exaggerated bite-sized bits of horror. Calm down, it was alright. If you appreciate the gore and the shock value, you'll dig it. It's like those YouTube compilations that splice together favorite parts of a movie. It has moments of brilliance, but it's also a bit too familiar. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, the bell, you know, the usual YouTube stuff. This is the newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles!